So, sir, my clinical diagnosis of this middle-aged man is end-stage renal disease, evidenced by the right-sided renal transplant, evidenced by right atrial fossa scar overlying the mass which is consistent with the kidney, which is forming consistency non-tender Dallon percussion, and there are no bruise overlying the mass. And also there is no hepato or liver and spleen and the kidneys are not palpable and palatable. So yes, my critical diagnosis of this middle-aged man is end-stage renal disease evidenced by right-sided renal transplant which is functioning very well. Because this right-sided renal transplant is functioning very well is evidenced by there is no clinical evidence of edema. And also this gentleman having the previous evidences of renal replacement therapy in the form of hemodialysis as evidenced by a non-functioning scar mark and non-functioning AV fistula because this is evidenced by a scar on the anticavital fossa. And also he had the history of previous form of the renal replacement therapy in the form of tunnel catheter for temporary hemodialysis evidenced by a scar on the chest. And this gentleman, the right sided new kidney or the renal kidney is not complicated by the complications of chronic kidney disease as the evidence as the evidence by there is absence of clinical evidence of anemia. And I have found there is no clinical evidence of any infections especially in the skin that I have found there is no clinical evidence of any skin and soft tissue infections. And also I have seen there are no skin lesions. It does mean this gentleman is not having any complications of any immunosuppressions. Because the immunosuppressive drugs having the complications of infections as well as the skin malignancies and skin some of the skin lesions. And he has no clinical evidence of any immunosuppressions. And I have found there is no clinical evidence of diabetes as there is an absence on the fingertip spin break and also he has no the, any insulin syringes at the bedside. So the underlying etiology of this gentleman, the second diagnosis that I can think the hypertension and because of the chronic kidney disease or the most common cause caused by the diabetes mellitus, I have found there is no clinical evidences of diabetes. And the second cause, the second likely diagnosis and the etiology of this end-stage renal disease may be the hypertension. And for this, I'd like to examine him, his cardiovascular system to get the apex bead, the healing in nature, so the bedside clinical evidence of hypertension that I can say. And thirdly, there, there may be the underlying etiology of the glomerular disease. But I found there is no clinical evidences of any glomerular disease, especially the mesangiocapillary glomerular nephritis type 2, where that we can get some of the facial lipo hypo, hypertrophy, lipodystrophy or lipotrophy. And also he has the, the kidneys are not palpable, not palatable. So this is also an evidence of the absence of adult dominant polycystic kidney disease underlying reason. And also he has no nephrectomy scar as well. So yes, the putting all them together, this gentleman, middle-aged man, has got the end-stage renal disease on renal replacement therapy in the form of right-sided renal transplant, which is functioning very well with the previous form of renal replacement therapy in the form of hemodialysis and also the temporary hemodialysis evidenced by the inact non-functioning um, AB fistula and also the scar mark on the chest. And he is right sided renal transplant or current form of renal replacement therapy is functioning very well as evidenced by no evidence of fluid overload in the form, in the form of leg edema. And also the current form of RRT means the current kidney or the right renal kidney is not complicated by any evidence of chronic kidney disease means absence of clinical evidence of anemia. He is on immunosuppression but I have found there is no complications of immunosuppressive drugs as evidenced by the absence of infections as well as the, any skin lesions or any skin uh, malignancies evidences. And the underlying etiology of this gentleman ESRD may be the hypertension 
or maybe the glomerular disease, the likely diagnosis. I would like to confirm the diagnosis by doing the ultrasound scan of the abdomen that will give me the idea of the right cerebral transplant, the kidney size, shape, all together. And also I would like to see the urea and alkalis all together. And these gentlemen, the right sided renal transplant is functioning very well right at this moment. So why did the doctor listen very carefully? Whenever you are presenting your case, you must to know and to cover the each and every, every points of the renal abdomen. The first important point, there is a current, the first important point, the diagnosis. The diagnosis, the ESRD, does mean the end stage renal disease as evidenced by renal replacement therapy. The best and the best and the best course ever you will experience in your whole life. Man. In the form of maybe the rice renal transplant or maybe in the form of hemodialysis. So yes, my dear doctor, the first point is the ESRD and ESRD evidenced by the renal replacement therapy. You need to look for the current form of renal replacement therapy, whether this is the rice renal transplant or maybe the hemodialysis. This is very important, my dear, to look for making your diagnosis. Sometimes the patient may have the right side renal transplant as well as the patient may have the hemodialysis, the AV fistula. So yes, my dear doctor, you need to know that which one is the current form of renal replacement therapy. So yes, my dear doctor, if the right side renal transplant along with the hemodialysis and having the hemodialysis, the two important talks of the hemodialysis, there is the inactive and also that you say the non-functioning. So yes, my dear, this is the two important words that we need to learn. The AB fistula is functioning means that a, there is a bruise, palpable bruise and the audible bruise. So if the bruise are present, so this is the active, doesn't mean the active, the functioning AB fistula. If you found the AB fistula, my dear, what you need to do, you need to look for the bruise. If you are getting the bruise, the diagnosis is the functioning AV fistula. Immediately after the functioning AV fistula we found that we need to look for the recent puncture mark. If the recent puncture mark is present, so you diagnose is an active AV fistula. If the recent puncture is absent, so this is inactive AV fistula right at this moment. It does mean my dear, this is very much important and I'm just recap the things once again. You found the AV fistula scar mark, you need to feel the bruise. If you found the bruise, and listen the brew, the diagnosis, the functioning of the fistula. Whenever you found the functioning of the fistula, then you need to once again to see very carefully whether any recent puncture mark is present or not. Recent puncture mark present, the diagnosis is an active AV fistula. Absent, inactive AV fistula. Active AV fistula means the recent puncture mark, means the AV fistula is working right at this moment, means the current form of RRT is hemodialysis by doing this AV fistula. So yes, my dear, having the right renal transplant, having the functioning active AV fistula does mean the current mood of RRT in the form of hemodialysis rather than right cerebral renal transplant, even though he has the renal transplant. So my dear, this is very important in the exam that you need to look and you need to detect the current mood of right renal replacement therapy. So yes, my dear, the first component the ESRD evidenced by the current mood of renal replacement therapy in the form of rice renal transplant, in the form of hemodialysis, or in the form of peritoneal dialysis, whatever. But the most important, the renal transplant and the hemodialysis. Second important point, the previous mood of renal replacement therapy in the form of hemodialysis, means the fistula, in the form of neck and chest scars, that is the tunnel catheter for the temporary hemodialysis, and then the abdomen, the scar marks that you need to look for the peritoneal dialysis. Yes, my dear. If you found the peritoneal scar, means that any scar, any small, small two scars or over the abdominal wall, then you need to think of the peritoneal dialysis that the previous, the previous the patient had. 
underwent. So if you found the peritoneal dialysis scar, in that case, then you need to look for other scars as well. What the scars? You need to look for the scars for the complications of the peritoneal dialysis. The scars for the peritoneal dialysis complications, it does mean that the peritoneal dialysis is an entry of the infarct in the peritoneum that leads to the peritonitis that may need it sometimes the exploratory lipidotomy and the washing the total epidemial abdomen. So there may be a midline laboratory scar or maybe the right pyramidium, the left pyramidium scar my dear. Along with the scar, there may be another late complications, maybe the midline abdominal wall hernia or maybe the inguinal region hernia. So these are the things that whenever you found the peritoneal dialysis scar, then you need to look for the scar for complications, right pyramidal, left pyramidal, midline laboratory scar for the peritoneal toileting or peritoneal washing for the peritonitis complications. And also this anterior abdominal midline or the anterior abdominal wall, the hernia as well as the inguinal region hernia. So these are the things that whenever you found the peritoneal dialysis scar. Otherwise, the first point, the ESRD, evidence by rise of renal transplant or the hemodialysis. Second is the previous form of RRT. Third, is very much important that the current mood of RRT, whatever, it may be the renal transplant, maybe the hemodialysis is functioning very well. Evidenced by the absence of fluid overload, fluid overload in the form of leg edema, sacral edema, facial edema, anosarca. So any fluid overload means that the, your current mood of RRT is not working properly or is not functioning very well. So my dear, the third important point that your current mode of RRT is functioning very well, evidenced by absence of leg edema. If you found the leg edema, so you can say the current mode of RRT is functioning less. Yes, my dear doctor. The fourth important point is very important that the current mode of RRT is complicated by any evidence of chronic kidney disease evidences. Means the chronic kidney disease evidences means the anemia. So Absence of any way does mean the current mode of RRT in the form of renal transplant is functioning very well and is working very well and no evidence of chronic kidney disease or not complicated by the current mood of RRT in the form of renal transplant is damaging process. It does mean the current mode of RRT in the form of rice and renal transplant is now structurally functionally well. Absence of anemia. So this is the fourth important point. So fourth is the complications of CKD, absence of anemia. The fifth important point, my dear, we need to look for, this gentleman is on steroid or not. So the steroid evidences that we need to look for, as for skin thinning, yes, my dear, you need to look for the skin thinning. And also the steroid purpura and the cushing goat faces, steroid card at the bedside or maybe the bracelet, medical art, steroid bracelet. So these are the evidences of steroid that we need to look for. And along with the steroid, the, any other immunosuppressive drugs the patient may is on or this gentleman is on that you need to look for. What is that? Cyclosporin for the gum have a blusher. Tremor, tacrolimus, T for tremor, T for tacrolimus. And also the immunosuppressive drugs complications, the next important points, my dear. So complications of immunosuppressive drugs include that the infections and the malignancies. Infections include the skin and soft tissue infections and the malignancies means the skin malignancies especially the squamous cell carcinoma and basal cell carcinoma. Sometimes the skin some viral infections are there some of the various shapes and sizes of skin lesions and sometimes over the skin lesion maybe the small small scars will be there so you need to see very vigilantly sometimes the examiner is asking why this is scar. You need to tell that the skin tissues is taken to exclude the skin malignancy to get the biopsy. So yes, my dear doctor, so these are the important points and last but not least that you need to talk about the underlying etiology of the end-stage renal disease. So what are, what are the points, my dear? I'm saying number one, ESRD, evidenced by renal replacement therapy in the form of renal transplant or hemodialysis, whatever. The second important point, the previous form of RRT in the form of hemodialysis or maybe the 
they can just scar for the tunnel catheters or maybe the peritoneal dialysis. Third important point, the current mode of RRT is functioning well, absence of leg edema. Fourth important point, the complications of chronic kidney disease, absence of anemia. Fifth important point, this gentleman is on steroid and other immunosuppressive drugs. And six important points, the complications of immunosuppressions, skin infections and malignancies. And last but not the least, number seven important points, my dear, this is really important, there is an underlying etiologies. So my dear, the chronic kidney disease or the insulin is the most commonly caused by the diabetes. Second one is the hypertension. Third one is the glomerular disease. Fourth is the ADPKD. That you need to remember these are the serials that you look for the any bedside clinical evidences so that you can say that the underlying etiology is the likely diagnosis. For the diabetes, they need to look for the fingertip spin pricks at the bedside, any insulin syringes, any tablets, any insulin pump, anything else. Along with that, for the diabetic evidences for the retinopathy that we can see the, by the ophthalmoscope, but at least that the fingertip spin prick that you need to look for. For the hypertension that the apex bead, if you are allowed to palpate, the apex bead to get the heavingness of the apical, apical pass. So here's the diagnosis of the hypertension at the bedside that you can say, other than measuring the blood pressure, because the patient is on treatment maybe. So the thirdly, the glomerular disease. Among all the glomerular disease, the MCG in type 2, there's a mesangio capillary glomerular nephritis, type 2, or we call the Membranopolyphytic glomerular nephritis. So, mesangiocapillary glomerular nephritis type 2, we can see the patients having the facial lipodystrophy, is another evidence. And also, the underlying etiology of the glomerular disease, the membranous glomerular nephritis caused by the systemic lupus erythematosus. In that case, the female, middle aged female, or the young female having the butterfly skin brushes, photosensitivity, discoid lupus, oral ulcer or with a medic alert breast that is written the SLE on steroid. So the diagnosis is done, the SLE at the bedside that you can say the lupus nephritis is the underlying etiologist. And also my the underlying etiology, as I said, the next to the glomerular disease, the AD piggery. So you can feel the so both the kidneys are bellotable and also the palpable kidneys. And also sometimes the AD piggery is and having some of the nephrectomy scar. Yes, my dear doctor. So these are the important etiologies that we need to work so that you can say the underlying etiology of the gentleman, the most likely the diabetes because of these, hypertension because of these, and glomerular disease because of these. Or if you found nothing at all, then you can start that yes, I think the underlying etiology of diabetes may be the reason, and I like to see and confirm it, and hypertension may be the second reason, and thirdly, the glomerular disease, and this and that. So yes, my dear, this is the way that you need to present the cases, my dear. And we have found there are, there are, there are the scar marks. You see, the renal abdomen is nothing but the scars that you're looking for. If I'm just describing the people, what the scars, my dear. If it starts from the scars, this is really important, that you start from the scar from the AB fistula here. So the scar for the AB fistula this is very important. If you go up, 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 and then you can scar for the neck and chest, for the tunnel catheters, and if you get down, my dear, there is a right iliac fossa scar for the right right renal transplant. And then if the peritoneal dialysis scar and also the complication of the PD scar for the midline laboratory scar or right or left paramedian scar or maybe having the, some of the complications of the hernia as well. And also the scar, the nephrectomy scar on the back and also the parathyroidectomy scar for the complications of chronic kidney disease, the tertiary hyperparathyroidism is treated by the parathyroidectomy. So yes, my dear doctor, these are the important scars that you need to look for, you need to open your eyes so that you can get the findings of the patients and make your diagnosis. So yes, my dear doctor, keeping all the important points in your mind and boom the presentations in front of the examiners, you will have the tremendous chances to get the high marks in your exams, my dear. I hope that you enjoyed. Thank you. Thank you very much.